what's up? So, we are coming back at you, and before we go any further, we just need to say one thing. Sorry. Yeah, we're so sorry. Um, we did not do what we said we were going to do as far as uh, the consistency uh, of videos that we were posting. Slightly in our defense, there were some things that happened, uh, including her getting sick, some traveling in there, which... Mm -hmm. That was fun. Some parts. <laughs> Some parts. So we are coming back at you and talking about something that is, we think, very, very important uh, for any relationship. Mm -hmm. Anyone. Even if it's not a marriage or dating relationship. Just even if it's a friendship. Mm -hmm. Or it's a colleague. Or colleague. And so I just want to talk to you about communication. And because this topic is so utterly important... Mm -hmm. We're breaking this up, so we're going to go in a bit more detail and probably get a little bit more personal next week. Subscribe, hit the notification so that you know when that comes through. But uh, today, we're just going to talk about why it's important yeah. and how to get better at it. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, you know, in our opinion, uh, the, the marriage relationship is the second most important relationship that you have. That is behind your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. We think that is the first most important relationship. Amen and needs to continually be cultivated. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, uh, the relationship you have with your spouse is the most important relationship. Because mm -hmm. when you got married, when you said those vows, the two of you became one. Fellas, she gave up her last name to take yours. Just think about that. Uh, There's a lot that comes with that. Security card. <laughs> There's a lot of lines we'll you have, have to, to like fill in and have to go in through. It's, well, it's actually a process. Getting a last name is not just getting a last name, but it is a process. It's actually a sincere, long process that actually kind of helps you realize, oh, I'm actually becoming one yeah. with this man. Or whoever you marry. <laughs> And all the women said, amen. <laughs> so with that, there's a there's a greater magnitude, not just maintaining the relationship, but succeeding mm -hmm. in the relationship. You know, that's something you don't see a whole lot of these days, unfortunately. You see a lot of spouses cheating on one another. You see a lot of just junk. That's anymore. media too, though. You and know, that is media. see bo both sides. Yeah, it is. And so and there's a lot of great relationships out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of great couples doing it right. Communication. Just looking at it from a practical standpoint, if you don't communicate, how good is how good is a relationship? Mm -hmm. And if you don't tell someone how you feel or you don't explain your side of the story or if you can't tell that person, you know, how you truly feel, that's 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 really bad for you. That's harmful to you. It's stressful for you. That'll that'll make you sick. Actually, mm -hmm. the Bible talks about if you actually put things inside you and put that stress on you, it's going to make you sick. And actually, Dr. Caroline Leaf, she's like a really cool psychologist, um, has actually talked about how in our brain cells, the negativity that we bring into our life makes an impact on how we actually make decisions in life, you know, and... Mm -hmm. I think communication is so vital to anyone that you deal with. Friendships, colleagues, bosses, people you work with if you go to a church, if you're married, if you're not, if you're dating, your friends. Oh my gosh, super important. Girls especially. We are messed up. Let's be real. We are all messed up. We're all broken. I'm broken. He's broken. We are not perfect. We're human. We're a work in progress. I think if you, you don't say what you need to say, you're hurting yourself more. I think that goes into being a communicator is something you have to realize that your voice is heard. You have to affirm that. You have to speak life into that. You know, affirming is such a great way of communication because it brings life. It builds life. It builds into things that you thought that maybe you didn't imagine. By you building life and encouraging and affirming others, it takes a perspective off yourself and seeing, oh, like that person's hurting. I need to say something. I need to do something to help them. It's not all about us. Let's be real. We shouldn't think about us. We need to take that perspective off of each other because if we don't, we're, we're just self, 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 self. And the Bible tells us that words are powerful. We've all heard the, the verse that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. It's true. You know, you can say something that is uplifting or you can say something that's damaging. There's a great book out there called Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And there it tells you how to communicate and how to best speak to someone's love language. Through knowing her and talking with her, I know the best way to speak to her are with words of affirmation 
and with quality time, at times with physical touch, not that physical touch. Spending less time on this. Adults spend 10 and a half hours on social media, not just phone, it could be computer, it could be whatever social media platform mm -hmm. um, that you're on, 10 and a half hours. Your time is limited. You sleep eight hours a day, maybe, but normally a human does sleep eight, up to eight hours a day. So 10, 18, 24 minus 18, six hours. That's horrible. And even looking at your relationship with God, the goal is that we want to grow closer to Jesus. And there's no way that we can do that if we don't spend time with him, if we don't uh, cultivate that relationship. If we're not intentional. See, the thing with communication is it's you have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. It does not happen by accident. If you're exactly. waiting for something to happen, if you're waiting for mm -hmm. a little like, oh, talk to her. It's or not happening. Whatever. Or him or whatever. It's not going to happen. You have to be intentional. You have to get outside of yourself, like what she was saying, and you have to take the first step. Be the better person. Yeah, exactly. Let's put it this way. We've been together for a little while now. We've learned how to and how to not mm -hmm. communicate with each other. We've learned how important words are and how mm. the right words or wrong words will affect the other person. And where it's done and how it's done. That's vital. It's super vital that not only the place where your spouse is, but where you speak maybe to your manager to your colleague, how you speak to them, even even over email, like read it again before you send it. You know, something like that is super vital to your job, to your future. In the whatever may corporate world, it could be in your nonprofit, or you work in a religious center, or wherever it may be, and uh, maybe in a gym. You know, it's super vital to how you send that email. Um, there are so many good applications out there to give you resources to help you. I want to talk my head personally right now, but I'm sure in below um, what we'll do is I will, uh, with JJ's help, we will put resources that we've learned that I'll apply to this information below. I think that would be really helpful. We want to be able to help people understand where resources to use because, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we're doing this video to help you, but. Maybe there's some other resources that would be more helpful to you and that's more deeper application or in, in a deeper depth to your understanding and to what you're going through. Yeah. You know, you're probably wondering, are they filming this in their car? The answer is yes, this is my car. The reason why we did this on purpose was because this is actually where we do the majority of our talking. Whether it's long road trips, driving around town, or even when we were dating, obviously we didn't live together, but when we were dating, we would go out to dinner or something like that and then we would just sit in the car mm -hmm. for hours and just talk about different stuff that's where i got to learn so much about about her mm -hmm. um I learned more about him exactly and just got to know each other mm -hmm. just hang out have fun press that and... lock button because <laughs> they can't leave oh, gosh you can leave but you don't want to leave because if you're wanting to spend time with you know with that special person, you just want to stay around them. And it, honestly, you never run out of things to talk about. Which I feel like I don't. <laughs> and to be honest, if you do, I think the relationship is dull. It's boring. We gotta make, make, I mean, we make it fun too. That's another thing. Go make it fun. Go do something fun. That's, that's another topic for another day. With the communication, it's so vital that you communicate whomever you're around. In a friendship, for instance, if that person is going through something and you may not know, maybe be intentional about reaching out to them. It's hard, I know life gets ahead of us and there's a lot of things that goes on, but make sure that you pay attention to what other people's needs are. It's not just about you. Having a spouse, I think has helped me. There's other things out there that people are dealing with, so um, they might not talk about it. And if you reach out to them, maybe they'll tell you. You never know. I feel like we've gotten better with this communication thing. Obviously, we're not perfect. We have bad days, just like anyone else. Bad but moments. here's the one thing we have learned. When that those bad moments come, because she's right there, are moments, not days. How to nip them right then and there. Letting go of pride, being humble, and just realizing that it is about the other person, but also at the same time, if you're just respecting that other person, that person is a son or a daughter of God. And so it's, it's also offensive to him. Mm -hmm. If we're having a moment, one of us is being dumb. If we decide to stay there and get caught up in our feelings, a breeding ground mm -hmm. for bitterness, and anger, and whatever else, if we just get over ourselves for that mm -hmm. quick of a moment, yep and say that I'm sorry, please forgive me, whatever it is, then there's something so much greater mm -hmm. waiting just on the other side of that. Yes. But for whatever reason, we like to kind of 
put up this little fortress around ourselves and that's that we think is impenetrable we build up this wall of pride we build up this this wall of just self and it's about us and not about you we don't care about your feelings it creates negativity on, on both sides if there's anything that we've picked up just from our own experiences is that moment is this long and that is all it takes mm -hmm. we're going to continue this next week mm -hmm. and just kind of get a little bit more personal with us and just kind of go a little deeper in that we'll be back next week have a good day bye